and welcome to our webinar where we're going to be discussing a really important topic for marketers, how to attribute marketing activities to lead generation and sales, also commonly referred to as marketing and revenue attribution. I'm Robin Kroll and I lead the data and insights practice at Goose Digital. We're a full service digital agency supporting clients with their digital marketing across marketing automation and CRM platforms. Goose is proud to be a gold level solutions partner with HubSpot and I'm thrilled to have Rebecca Phillips, channel account manager at HubSpot, join me for this really relevant discussion. Hi, Rebecca. Hey, Robin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. That's great to hear. So Rebecca and I are gonna kick off by discussing some of the top priorities and challenges uh, that marketers are facing today. Uh, Rebecca, you probably have hundreds of conversations every week with marketers, and I know you've got a lot of great um, information to, to share with everybody. Um, and then we're gonna walk through the different elements that contribute to attribution. And then we're gonna dive into how HubSpot with its fully integrated marketing automation and CRM and flexible reporting is so powerful in supporting marketers in measuring attribution. Robin, thank you. I do have a lot of conversations with CMOs, um, CEOs, um, CFOs, folks who are looking to really prove out uh, the ROI on marketing. And I think that is something that sets HubSpot apart. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I love working here because that sort of data can really drive new business. Yeah, absolutely. We're all, we're all really talking about growth, growth, right? So, you know, this, this quote that I've got up on the screen, this is actually pretty old quote is from 1920s and and I would think most marketers have probably heard some version of it so hopefully no marketer is in a position today where uh, they can't figure out what's going on with half of their advertising or marketing budget hopefully that percentage is a little bit lower but we know that there's still you know marketers are still really challenged with understanding what part of my marketing what channels what campaigns what content is actually being effective and what's not being effective with the whole objective of saying well if i know it's working that's where i'm going to double down and invest and then pull back on the on the channels that that are not working so rebecca what do you think some of the you know some of the reasons why marketers are still facing this challenge today well, I think a major reason is that data is um, more often than not siloed in different tools. Um, and therefore the teams are siloed operating in these different tools. And so the marketing to sales handoff is a huge component. And then the sales feedback loop to marketing so that we can report on this sort of data is really, really critical. Um, both marketing and sales can be operated within HubSpot or you could be operating some of that through HubSpot and then through integration, having those other tools loop the data in for reportability. Yeah, but that, that integration piece is, is so critical. You know, the, those siloed tools, siloed conversations, um, you know, we sometimes see the silo between strategy and execution. So that's another big gap where, you know, one hand doesn't know what the other one is doing. And it really makes it difficult for marketers to, to connect the dots between what they're putting in market and what the sales team are actually seeing. Yeah. And I will say too, the question can sometimes be, um, are we talking leads? Are we talking customers? Are we talking dollars? Um, and so attribution can come in a lot of different forms and metrics, and we'll dive into a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, that, go that, that That's a really great point. And, and, you know, Rebecca, I know you were able to share this really interesting uh, report that HubSpot has put together, really identifying um, you know, marketing leaders top goals in 2023 when I whenever I see goals, you know, I also think of the flip side, which are the challenges right so so you know where they want to get to but knowing that it's difficult getting uh, getting there so top goal increasing revenue and sales right and and in order to you know 
part of being able to do that is knowing what works, right? So that marketers can go ahead uh, and invest in, and drive that, that pipeline value, which feeds back to our, our larger conversation uh, about uh, marketing attribution. Um, you already called out that uh, sales and marketing alignment or marketing and sales depends, you know, who starts, who continues back and forth. Um, but you know, some really interesting insights uh, from what you shared with us. Yeah, I really focus on those top two that you called out. Um, that's counting for 40% of the goals and to your point, the challenges, right? So um, increasing revenue, increasing sales, um, improving sales and marketing alignment. When I think about those things and kind of what I said before about how you can look at attribution in terms of contacts, customers, uh, revenue, um, a marketer needs to be able to know which marketing assets and resources are driving new contacts into their funnel. And they also need to be able to know which assets are driving which type of customers, which personas that are likely to drive to what or which type of revenue. Um, so that if you're going to be able to move these levers when you need revenue in certain spaces or areas, depending on the seasonality of your business, you need to be able to have those KPIs and those metrics so that you can really have some control over the efforts that you're putting in place. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And another great segue to sort of the next thing that we wanted to to talk about or, or sort of um, dive into is, you know, we started off saying that, you know, that today's conversation is really about uh, marketing, marketing attribution and revenue attribution and maybe taking a step back and, and uh, you know, using HubSpot again, a uh, really clear, straightforward definition. Um, you know, what, what is marketing attribution? So marketing attribution is, it's a reporting strategy uh, that allows marketers as well as the sales team to see the impact that marketing is making on a particular goal. Um, you know, Rebecca, as you just said, that that goal can be driving leads, right? There's different levels of leads. There's the marketing qualified, the sales qualified leads, or it can be revenue. And it's probably uh, both, um, you know, depending on what the strategy is, depending on the persona, the seasonality, a marketer's focus might be driving uh, awareness. So wanting to understand the, uh, you know, the, the marketing initiatives that are actually gonna drive those, those new marketing qualified leads, or is it going to be, you know, marketers really being able to step back and say, this is what we have done to to drive that that pipeline revenue. Yeah, and I think a lot about how HubSpot thinks about the attract, convert, and close phases. Um, when you're trying to attract leads and then be able to understand which marketing assets and resources you can attribute those leads to, again, that gives you that lever when you need to turn that on and we need more top of the funnel like that's where our pain is coming from right now internally that's holding back our growth so we need to drive more leads okay now it's not necessarily driving more leads it's moving these leads through the funnel which marketing assets and uh, assets and resources help them in the convert phase or help them in the close phase yeah, I mean, and if you you think of like, you know, there's a whole series of taps, right? The marketers are going to go ahead and turn on. And some of those taps are going to flow to one level, some further on. But just think if, if marketers are able to say, well, I know which tap I'm going to turn on to drive this versus the other, or which one I'm going to turn on more fully, that this marketing attribution and the reporting is, is just so incredibly powerful. Um, and, you know, that that power, uh, you know, marketers need that power because marketers are being increasingly held responsible for being able to, to justify their budgets and to be able to to report back. Um, so, you know, if I think of what a, what a marketer is doing today, you know, a marketer, a typical marketer will have multiple different campaigns in market across many channels, 
right? Different for different objectives, different audiences, et cetera. Um, you know, different channels. I, I'm just thinking we've got digital channels largely, but we've got some offline channels as well. Uh, we know that, you know, conferences, trade shows, those are huge uh, lead generators for a lot of businesses. Um, and as marketers across the globe are being increasingly held accountable for, for driving uh, that, you know, the top of the business all the way down to the pipeline, um, they need to be able to have this visibility. Um, you know, we talk about marketing attribution, um, you know, one thing we didn't mention, we, we kind of talked about the definition, is we have a concept of, you know, there's different marketing attribution models, which I think we're going to cover uh, a little bit later. But we talk, in, we talk uh, a lot about this concept of first touch and last touch. So the first touch would be, what is the first uh, marketing initiative that drove interest? So going from a prospect to a, a lead or a qualified lead, you know, what was the campaign, the channel, the, the asset? Um, and if marketers are able to, at the very starting point, understanding what was the first touch that actually made that lead into someone that we could qualify and begin to, to talk to? I think that's a, a tremendous amount of value. And I, I don't think all marketers have that visibility today. Mm -mm. No, absolutely not. Um, I think, again, when you're thinking about top of the funnel and you're attracting people to your site, how are you getting these people to fill out a form and be willing to give you some of their information? And I think whole nother topic, but first party data, the value of that in the future. Um, so if you know how to, like you said, turn that tap on to drive more contacts into your database, then you have a lot more to nurture along the way. Um, I, I also kind of think a little bit, as you were saying before about lead attribution and revenue attribution. There's one thing I'll say about lead rev, uh, attribution. I kind of laugh because my father always said like, you can't take leads to the bank, right? You can take uh, dollars to the bank. You can't take leads to the bank. But if you happen to know that leads that come through through this particular first touch tend to turn into high value customers, then you can treat those leads a little bit differently and maybe serve them up to your sales team a little bit differently. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And then, and you know, again, um, I'm trying to think how to, to to sort of touch on your father's analogy, but I'll I'll skip that. But I think until you get those leads in the door, you can't even begin to to take them to the bank. Um, and you know, I, I just think of how flexible the HubSpot reporting is, and and you know, being able to identify where did that lead come so coming from you know high level channel so what is your your paid social you know how uh effective if that is how effective is that channel uh versus you know organic versus you know offline and then being able to get even a little bit more granular so you know typically a business is going to be um, you know, running paid social across a couple of different channels. Well, is it going to be LinkedIn? Is it going to be Facebook? Um, you know, what what is actually driving those leads through? And again, having that initial reporting. And then, you know, Rebecca, as we talked about that, you're talking about the, those qualified leads. So getting a little bit more granular and here you're getting, you're getting closer to that bank because now you're being able to tie back, oh, those, you know, what channels are really good at driving marketing qualified leads? What channels are really good at driving those sales qualified leads? Um, and just getting that data in the door, um, being able to, uh, you know, being able to have that that visibility. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned the ease of HubSpot reports, which I appreciate. Um, one of the things that I love when you are using marketing and sales in HubSpot is again, that closed loop reporting. So all that data is right in here and easy to access. So when you're looking at a report like this and you click on or hover over some of this information, it's gonna tell you the deal or it's gonna tell you the contact and you can pop right into that contact and see their entire timeline. I know we'll talk a little more about that. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of great data. And you know, one of the things about having this integrated platform is, you know, as you're leveraging these marketing automation platform tools, you're able to see them right away in the CRM. So, you know, one of the things that we do a lot at Goose is we, we really 
uh, share best practices with our clients on how to how to maximize their your, their data so that they can uh, have this attribution visibility. Um, and, and one of the things that you know we always talk about is this data capture where um, you're using you're using the tools to capture things you're not always asking uh, your clients and and you know forms uh, for any kind of your your lead gen activities hugely uh, valuable um, hidden fields and I think uh, you know there's a lot of I know for a lot of our clients this is something new that they're not using uh, before so when you're using hidden fields you know as in this example you're able to Every single time you're capturing a lead, you're automatically capturing, you know, the the channel and even more granular. So even if they're coming from LinkedIn, you're probably going to have multiple LinkedIn campaigns. Well, if you're capturing the exact chat, the exact campaign, you've got all that data right away in HubSpot, and you're able to go ahead and, uh, you know, have that marketing attribution reporting. Um, you know, we also uh, talk about using ETM, UTM codes for tracking. So again, you might have a single asset that you're using across different channels, using those codes to understand, you know, which asset and which channel, increase visibility. Um, and then some of the other best practices might sound really basic but it's really helpful that when you're using standardized naming conventions for your campaigns for your your um, assets so again when you're doing your reporting you can see this at a, a, a channel level um, increasingly again where we've got some of these offline uh, sources like conferences and trade shows using these type of uh, forms, you know, HubSpot has great forms that you can go ahead and, and have your sales team use on a tablet um, at a trade show and as they're capturing leads and you've got those hidden fields already populated with the fact that you're at a conference and what the conference name is. So all these great tools that you're leveraging between the, the two platforms to go ahead and, and uh, maximize the data that you have in uh in your your attribution reporting good tips i like all those um and i will say from the from the uh, the visitor's perspective or the person filling out the form it's hidden right they don't see any of the the fields on the back end that's going to help you track that data and then on the campaign side um in hubspot you can actually track just a quite wide variety of marketing assets to a campaign to then see the um, influence contacts and the influenced revenue if we're looking at revenue attribution for campaigns as well. And so things like workflows, forms, ads, emails. Um, it just kind of, it's kind of endless. It's really, you're only limited by, by the data you have. And I'm sure we could, we could spin up multiple different conversations where we, we can uh, dive deeper into sure. to all of these. Um, so we talked about, um, uh, marketing attribution, really we're talking about first touch um, and wanted to flip over to revenue attribution, right? So this is really uh, sales with the deals um, and what we're really talking about last touch, right? So if the first touch is what drove the interest, the last touch is what is the last thing, what is the last marketing uh, campaign or asset that a lead uh, was exposed to or engaged with that finally got them to cr to cross that line and begin that that deal process. So you know, even with a qualified lead, we know that there's going to be quite a bit of nurturing that happens between that first touch and then that last touch. So the the first touch and the last touch probably going to be of, of different different values. Um, and it's interesting with the, the first touch, we can do use a lot of automation as we talked about the, the, the forms, but the last touch is a little bit different, right? It's not as automated because there are so many different things that a lead can be exposed to uh, that's gonna cause them to sort of pull the trigger on the deal. Yeah, you know, when I look at this data, I kind of think, okay, so the last thing someone's gonna touch before they make a purchase is they're gonna go directly to my website. Maybe they're looking at, the about us page, or maybe there was specific information they wanted to brush up on on services. Um, that empowers you to say, okay, if this is the last place they're gonna go before making a decision, maybe we should use some dynamic content on our website 
for anyone who's in a final prospect stage with an open deal, let's make the banner or the hero image be something specific or the call to action button something specific for them so that you can really create these dynamic, personalized experiences that are going to drive them to buy. Absolutely, because at that point, you certainly know a lot more about about the lead that you're able to to, to personalize. Um, and just one last point on on the revenue attribution. Uh, this is where marketers can start building out uh, reporting where they're looking on return on ad spend or uh, return on investment. So super valuable. Um, now, the, the thing about the revenue attribution, because there's so much that uh, a lead can be exposed to, um, this is where the sales team really gets involved. Um, and this screen that we're sharing now, um, maybe you just want to do a quick walkthrough so that everybody can understand how much data is automatically available uh, to the sales team within HubSpot to, to kind of make that decision about what, you know, what that, uh, what that attributable marketing asset is. Yeah, I mean, HubSpot IPO'd on our marketing tools, but at our core, we are a CRM. And so when you go to a contact record, you're going to have this timeline in the middle of all of the ways that this contact has interacted with your website, with people at your company, with any of the ads that you're putting out there, um, with different integrations that you have, one-to-one -one sales emails, phone calls, notes that are dropped internal collaboration. So anything on that timeline, you're actually able to automate based on too, which is incredibly cool. You can see on that left-hand side, the website activity, you can customize all this in terms of who's viewing it and what's important to them. But as a salesperson myself, when I hop onto a contact record, there's certain things, there's pieces of context that I'm looking to grab. What was the last thing they, they read on our website? Was it a blog, maybe when I reach out, I'm gonna reference that, ask them a question about it. What were they trying to solve? Did that blog help them? Can I help you? Um, it's gonna be a warmer outreach for a salesperson having all that context and perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where there's the marketing to sales and then sales back to marketing uh, kind of handoff that that happens when you expose all of this data. So just, you know, so much great information. Um, and I think the, the last thing we want to just uh, highlight is that um, there are so many ways to track attribution. There's multiple different attribution models. We talked about first touch, last touch, but I think we've got about nine different attribution models that come out of the box uh, with HubSpot. And, and the great thing about the platform is that you don't have to make a decision about which model you want to use when you're setting up HubSpot or even a particular campaign. Um, you know, what, when we work with our clients, we usually test out a few. Uh, we might, uh, you know, look at them over across, uh, across a couple different campaigns before we make a decision which one of the different attribution models uh, we would go ahead and recommend. Um, but what's really great is it's, it's available to the marketer and as as you get more sophisticated, you'll probably go into these more uh, complex models uh, that are out there, but we always suggest, you know, let's start with the basic ones with the first touch and last touch and move on um, as as you want, as you move uh, through your your um, marketing attribution. Yeah, and I usually try to simplify all these different options and ways to look at it by saying the first touch, the last touch, as we described, and then distributing that in different percentages across the customer journey. And depending on what type of business, what type of sales cycle you have, one attribution model might make more sense to your point. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what have we talked about today? All right, so we've talked about marketing attribution and revenue attribution and how they're, they're really both really critical uh, for marketers and for marketing in order to determine the impact of their efforts and continue to, to drive value. We know that marketers are being held accountable uh, for revenue and being able to report on that. Um, there are a few different ways to determine what's driving the value. So uh, as we talked about attribution models, but the key is to have the correct processes and data tracking in place. Um, so marketers are going to continue to be asked to prove their value and, and those that can do that 
they're going to be able to uh, instill further confidence uh, with, uh, within the, the senior leadership in their team, and they're probably going to be able to secure uh, additional budget because they can go ahead and uh, make those da data-driven um, ideas. HubSpot, Map, and CRM is really such a great platform to be able to track uh, from end to end the sales, whatever marketing is doing and how sales is uh, reaction, reacting and interacting and then feeding back uh, to, to marketing. Um, and then the last thing is that, um, you know, on behalf of myself and Rebecca, uh, both Goose Digital and HubSpot are here to help marketers as they try and really uh, leverage uh, the, their, their data to get a greater understanding of the impact of their marketing and help grow their business. So very th well said. I'm thinking back to that original quote that you shared about, you know, not wearing, knowing which half came from where. Yeah. I just think that really underscores like we've come so far and we have the tools and it is possible and the data can really set you free, right? And set you up for more success. Um, and really probably if you haven't done this yet, doing it is going to open up these areas of opportunity that are going to completely shift your focus and what you're looking at in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well said back at you, Rebecca. And thanks so much for joining me today. All right. Thank you.